Remember our favorite small group verse in the Bible, 1 Corinthians 14, 26. It's where we get the name core groups. What then shall we say, brothers and sisters, when you come together, each of you has a hymn or word of instruction, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. Everything must be done so that the church may be built up. This is Paul's experience of the church, and it makes up the three distinctives of core groups, a place where we come together as brothers and sisters, what we call bonding as a family, a place where each of us has something to share, what we call bringing something to the table, a place where everything that's done is for the good of the community, what we call building up the church. Last week, we covered what it means to bond together as a family. This week, we're talking about bringing something to the table. Now, remember what we've been saying all along. Small groups should do what only small groups can do. I love Paul's experience of the church. Each of you has a hymn or a word of instruction, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. These house churches were small enough size that everyone brought something to the table. They each gathered together with a desire and a plan to contribute something to the gathering. Now that would be impossible to do on a Sunday morning. Don't get me wrong, Sunday morning is a beautiful picture of the church offering up their bodies as a living sacrifice. It's a time where some people lead kids Sunday school so parents can go to church service and so kids can be discipled. It's a time where ushers and greeters make a great first impression to, so that people can feel welcomed and want to come back. It's a time where worship leaders, sound booth techs, live stream techs, and lyric techs all work together to make worship an experience where people can glorify and encounter God. Truly, it's a great work and it has an important function in the life of the church. And yet, if everyone brought a hymn to sing, we'd be there all day. It's only in small groups where everyone can bring something to the table. So let's do what only small groups can do. Can I tell you a secret? Your small group leader doesn't really want to be a glorified event planner. Instead of a place where one person made everything possible, why not create a space of equal ownership where everyone contributed to the gathering? I know what some of you are thinking. What if I don't really feel like I have anything to share? The truth is that you do. And if you don't contribute, you're actually withholding grace that God has given you that was meant for others. Think for a moment about 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. There you go. Scripture says that you've been given grace or a gift that's intended for you to serve others with as faithful stewards of God's grace in all its various forms, each of you. And if you don't serve others with it, then you're not being a faithful steward of God's grace. So if your small group leader becomes a glorified event planner because they are the only ones preparing, the only ones contributing, the only ones planning, then something is not operating the way it was meant to. How do we do it? That's the big question because some of you might be feeling a little nervous right now. Let me give you three things that you can do to make sure you're contributing. One, be prepared. When your group is studying a passage of scripture together, more on that later, prepare. Read the passage ahead of time. Study it. Ask questions. Search for answers. Come with something in mind to say or share. You can also prepare by praying for your people and praying for your time together. In fact, when Paul says that each of you has a hymn or a word of instruction or a revelation, chances are that those people prayed ahead of time asking God, is there anything that you want me to bring to our gathering today? That's true spiritual work. Remember Jesus said, flesh gives birth to flesh, but spirit gives birth to spirit. If I want to bear spiritual fruit, then I need to do a spiritual work. If I want to contribute something meaningful, I'll ask God what he wants me to bring. Lastly, you can prepare by suggesting what you might bring. Maybe you can bring a worship activity, a snack, a prayer focus, or a word of encouragement to someone. Maybe you want more of an official role. Perhaps you'll be in charge of taking notes and emailing the group the highlights of your study together so you can think about them throughout the week. Maybe you'll be in charge of the group directory, getting everybody's contact information and paying special attention to who hasn't been in a while that might need someone to check in on them. Maybe you'll text everyone the day of and say, don't forget to come to group tonight. We're studying Acts chapter two. Can't wait to see you there. Next, be personal. This one is really important to me. 
People aren't necessarily coming to small group to find out your take on the latest hot button issue. People aren't coming to small group to find out how you think other people need to change or about a theological issue that you feel really strongly about that other people often get wrong. What's going on here? This person who uses group this way tends to be like the woman at the well who says to Jesus, where should we worship? The Jews say this and the Samaritans say that, let's debate. When in reality, she needed to be encountering her Messiah. You contribute to your group when you personalize and you say, this is what I'm learning. This is how I'm growing. This is how God is using this passage to speak to me. Lastly, be yourself. This one's my favorite. I'm an introvert. Sometimes I get to the end of a stressful day at work and the last thing I want to do is have a bunch of people over. If you're that way, you have a tendency to text your group and say, you know, tonight's not good for me. I think I just need to stay home. If we're sharing life together, shouldn't we be able to show up being ourselves? If we're a family, shouldn't I be allowed to come and not be completely put together? We mentioned in our first video Brene Brown's definition for courage, to be able to tell the whole story of who you are with your whole heart. I've always thought that Christians should be the most wholehearted people in the world. Yes, we've got a past and sometimes we want to hide it, but the reality is because of Christ, we're not defined by our past and so we ought to be free to be who we really are. And because of that, God can use my broken past for his glory so that even my past sin, which once hurt God and my relationship with God, can now be used to exemplify his goodness and his grace. So when I say, be yourself, I don't mean to unapologetically embrace your faults. I'm not talking about being obnoxious. I'm talking about being wholehearted, genuine, and authentic about your day, about your past, and about your faith. If we're going to do what only small groups can do, let's move away from this consumeristic mentality where my small group leader is a glorified event planner and I show up looking to receive. Instead, Let's take equal ownership of our community, asking ourselves and expecting ourselves to bring something to the table. You do that best by being prepared, being personal, and being yourself.